Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Sometimes when I'm prepping, I need to remind myself it isn't all just about food storage. I need to make sure that I'm also stocking up on a wide variety of supplies because not only do we need water and food, we need a way to cook our food. We need ways to have light and heat. We need to also remember things like first aid tools and all of the emergency categories that we would need. Winter's coming, shelter is one to think about as well. So be thinking about areas of prepping, not just about food. So I bought a variety of new prepping supplies and I thought I would share with you and explain what I bought and how I'm going to use it. First, I bought a five gallon water bottle. The water that's already bottled in the store is just not available and I needed some other containers so that I could store more water and make sure that I felt I had enough. You can clean and disinfect them with some bleach solution water and then you can fill them from your faucet. If the water from your faucet is already safe to drink, it's safe to put away and store. Water doesn't become expired. If anything, it might become flat. Did you ever leave a glass of water by the side of your bed? and in the morning you took a drink and it just didn't taste right, it tastes stale. The oxygen in your H2O has escaped. You can re-oxygenate your water, pour it back and forth between two glasses, two containers, and then it's going to taste fine again. So don't ever think that your water isn't safe to drink simply because it tastes kind of stale. If for any reason you're suspicious that your water may not be safe to drink, put it through your water filter. When I bought this five gallon water container, I also saw that they had extra lids. They were only one dollar for two lids, so it seems like a great idea to have a few extras of things that you could really need. If you lost the lid to your water storage container, that could be a big problem. I already have this water pump that I reviewed a while ago, which is really nice because you can insert the long handle into the water container it's battery operated and you can pump water out through the hose. That's nice if you want to pump a lot of water, but what if you just wanted to get a drink of water? This wouldn't be that handy for just filling up a glass of water. I bought a different kind of a pump to go with this water storage container. It actually is USB rechargeable. It fits right on the top. It has a nice metal spout and you press the button and the water will pump out. Let me show you how it works. You insert the spout into the unit. You attach the open end of the hose straight into the bottom. And then you can see there's a little gizmo on the other end of the hose. Then you just put the hose down into your bottle and there you go. And you can see it more than reaches to the bottom so you're going to be able to get every last drop and it's ready to go. This doesn't have water in it right now but you can see how easy it comes already charged. It would be ready to dispense water. It's ready to dispense water. It's easy to press it on press it off and get just the amount you want. If you have little kids, you may want to supervise them for a while so they don't turn it on and all of the water runs out before you realize that they're exploring. It's a great way to access a glass of water, whether it's an everyday occurrence, an emergency, or even if you're going camping. I might take this out to granny camp because it would be an easy way to get a drink of water in my off-grid cabin. Doesn't have any running water, I haul all the water out there and this would be a convenient way then to serve a glass of water. If for some reason water did stop running for an extended period of time, having paper plates could really be a difference between how you can serve a meal and not worry about having the water that you need for drinking and food preparation and hygiene rather than just washing dishes. I bought 400 paper plates for about $10. You could easily put one of these on top of a real plate, serve your meal, and then you can dispose of these. I also like to use a paper plate in the microwave as a cover, then if something explodes, it goes all over the paper plate instead of all over the microwave, so it helps make things easier to clean up.
When you're camping, use a paper plate to cut up your food. Then you can put it into your dish, whatever you're making, and then the paper plate doesn't have to be washed. It can be disposed and you have less work cleaning up when you're camping. Lights in an emergency can be vital. I ordered some long candle wicks. These are six inches long. They have a metal base so that you could dab them into the bottom of a glass container and fill up your melted wax and make your own candles. It's a good way to reuse your old candles, ones that burn down the middle and not around the edges. You can remelt those and refill your candle container with a new wick. What can you do if the lights go out? Here's an emergency light bulb that actually is recharged when it's burning as a regular light bulb. If the power goes out, this bulb will continue to burn for several hours. What's nice is you can then remove it out of the light socket. It has a base with a hook. You can screw it on and then you can hang it up somewhere. Take it with you. Maybe you need to take it into the bathroom, into the bedroom somewhere else besides in the light that it's in. You can see they come already charged. I just took it out of the box. There's a little switch and I can turn it on and it provides the same amount of light as a regular light bulb. If you have it in your lamp, it provides a complete circuit because it's still plugged in. But if you unplug your light, then the circuit is broken. This comes with this little adapter that if you wanted to take your whole lamp and move it to another place, you can unplug it, place this adapter over the end of your plug, it reconnects the circuit, then you can take the lamp and move it to any other place that you want. These light bulbs are a little longer. You can see it sticks out a little bit higher on this small lamp just because they need to be a little bit bigger to have that charging unit built into the light bulb. You can see right now it's working on its own power because this is unplugged and I put the connector here. If I take the connector off, the bulb goes out. So you can see how great this works. You can use it with the screw on part and hang it up or you can use it in your regular lamp and you put this little connector over the plug if you want to move the plug around. When the lamp is plugged in the wall and the power goes out, the light will continue to work. But if you unplug it and you want to move the lamp, that's when you're going to use this connector. Some of the reviews I've read, if you put these into a fixture that has multiple bulbs, it may not continue to work because of the uh, electricity that's being drawn from the other bulbs. So try to use these in a lamp or something that takes a single bulb to, for it to work most effectively. Something a little quirky that I ordered was a set of dental tools. I'm not necessarily going to start dental work on myself or my family. These are actually nice for digging into little things and I actually bought them so that I could clean out the little holes in my dishwasher. These are also nice because you can use them to open a cardboard box. You can pull out the little tabs and then you don't tear up the box when you're trying to open things. Sometimes we're not sure if we want to keep something, so we don't want to tear up the box while we're inspecting it to decide if it's something that we really want. It's also nice to have little tiny sharp objects that you can poke around in some of the tasks that you do. So dental tools might be something that you want to add to your prepping supplies. Yes, prepping includes dehydrated foods. I ordered some more of the Augustin Farms foods. I found them at a really good deal on Amazon. So I bought three different types of the dehydrated foods for my long-term food storage pantry. These are gonna be a nice option to foods that you normally have in your pantry, but this is a way to store those foods the longest term, and we don't need to worry about them becoming spoiled because these are professionally packaged to last. So I got the peanut butter powder. It's still hard to get things like peanut butter to last forever, so you need to pay attention that all of these foods don't last 30 years. The peanut butter powder has a shelf life, it says of five years. I would expect it to last longer simply because many foods do last longer than the date on the package. I have had unopened jars of peanut butter go rancid and were no longer good to eat several years past their date. 
So you need to try to rotate foods within the guidelines and then be checking. Lots of times foods will last longer, but not always. I don't eat a lot of cooked carrots, but it's nice to have them to add to soups, stews, and other kind of recipes. So the dehydrated carrots from Augs and Farms have a 25 year shelf life. This will be nice because when I run out of actual any kind of carrots that I can get, I can open this package, toss a few into any kind of a recipe, and then if you do decide you want to open something like this, you can put the lid back on it. It'll be good for a year after you open it. You could seal up the remainder of the can with, say, a vacuum sealer or an oxygen absorber, and then you're going to extend that life back to the original time frame of how long it would have lasted if it had been unopened. I also got another can of the Augustine Farms banana chips. These are very tasty. Fresh bananas just don't last, so adding some banana chips that are freeze dried to your food storage might be just the thing that you would enjoy having. It's also the time of year when people are camping and you're more likely to find the propane and butane than other times of the year. I try to pick up fuel bottles a few at a time, some for my portable heater, some for my portable stove, so that I'll have the things I need. Last winter, it was impossible to get any of these, and fortunately, I had enough that I didn't run out. But if you lived in a place where you had an extended power outage, you would know this isn't going to be enough. There's no way to know how long a power outage might last, so maybe just look at what you went through last winter. If you had several days or even weeks, figure out if that happened again this year, are you better prepared to deal with it than you were last year? The last thing I bought was at a thrift store. I found this insulated lunch box and it is very lightweight. It only weighs a few ounces. I got it for $1.76. It's all insulated inside and it's going to be perfect for using as a cozy for my mountain house meals. If you're ever preparing your mountain house meals and it's cold outside, you want the water to remain as hot as possible for as long as possible. So my meals are gonna fit into the cozy. It has some Velcro on the top and then I can let this continue to warm and not worry about it cooling too quickly. My meal will still be warm and enjoyable. These are the new items that I bought to add to my prepping gear. I want to make sure that I have all of the things that I could possibly need, no matter what the future holds. Nobody knows what's coming, but we can pretty much guarantee we're all going to face challenges ahead. So get the supplies that you think you most need to make your life be the most enjoyable and comfortable as possible. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might enjoy it please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.